My name is uh, Mr. Bryn Davis, and this is the uh, AS Biology Revision uh, recap session for the uh, series of videos that have been uh, previously recorded on Caroline Cymru. So uh, tonight we're going to have a quick whistle stop recap tour through uh, Unit 1.2 Cell Structure and Organization. Okay? Brilliant. So, um, Again, so aims of the session, uh, hopefully we will um, have a quick recap. So this is going to be a refresher um, to try and um, uh, do some uh, some knowledge recall of uh, the main points from uh, unit 1.2. OK, if you have a preferred note taking method, that's absolutely fine. You're welcome to do that. Um, if you would like to write notes, I suggest um, this method here, uh, the Canal method where you split your paper into um, three. So down there like that and across the bottom. This is for your main notes. OK, so remember, be efficient, paraphrase, uh, not big, long um, essays. These are cues and reminders to help you with that. And then the summary at the bottom can be the start of your um, flashcards or whatever. OK. Good. So um, also, as well as uh, these Catalan Cymru videos, there are an awful lot of um, uh, resources out there. Um, there's particularly good resources on the WJC website itself. Um, the uh, blended learning, it's called in English, that um, has um, an awful lot of, of, of really good resources, really good recall resources, you know, in order to get that, um, that strong basis of, of learning subject matter under your belt. OK, so remember they are available as well. Um, it's always better to have fewer, better quality revision resources than it is to have a million ones that aren't very good. Yeah, you don't want to spend your time looking for a million resources when one or two and using them effectively and efficiently are going to be um, much more beneficial for you. OK, <clears throat> excuse me. OK, so this is the um, syllabus the mice have it for the uh, for cell structure and organization okay and it looks quite a skinny one really there's only four uh, points there okay but there's an awful lot of information embedded within these all right and um, there's also uh, two specified practice that go with this all right the calibrating and uh, the scientific drawing as well okay so like i say this is what i would call a um a bread and butter unit where there's an awful lot of learning, uh, learning stuff. OK, so you need to know the le learn the names, structure, function um, and the like. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, there are, you know, marks available um, for that type of, of work. OK, so um, one of the main points, so this I think this covers point one and two in the syllabus here is um, the um, a structure and function of the cell and the organelles. OK, so the list here uh, at the top of these are all of the organelles uh, that you need to know the uh, structure and function thereof. All right. So there are many different ways um, of doing this. OK, personally, because my mind travels in straight lines, I like to do this as a table. OK, so you'd write your um, uh, so you'd have your uh, table like this and then you would go your, oh, excuse me, my plasma membrane. OK, and then diagram or picture there of, of what it looks like so you're able to identify it correctly in the cell. OK, so obviously on a, a small drawing, this is going to just be a, a line. Uh, pardon me and then so there's a there's a link here that you can make with 1.3 okay so the the phospholipid bilayer all right so you can um you can do a little diagram of your phospholipid bilayer there okay to uh, remind you of um the detailed ultrastructure of this organelle okay uh, so remember uh, they do like asking questions that do lap over um, different units. OK, so it's that you, you won't just get a question on cell division or, or sorry, on uh, cell structure or on uh, plasma membrane. You know, you will have parts of units within one question. All right. So then a, a description here of um, 
of what it is. OK, so here you would you would call it your um, phospholipid bilayer. OK, um, <clears throat> you'd say you could if you wanted to in here describe it as something like the the skin of the cell. OK, what keeps the cell together? All right. Um, the. Um, um, the uh, standard um, uh, description of the function. OK, so um, we're, we're moving on to this one now. So the st standard description of, of the function here is that it controls the entry and exit of uh, certain substances. OK, um, you could also in the description bit put uh, the, the uh, proteins. OK. OK, so there are protein pumps. Uh, there are intrinsic and extrinsic proteins um, spanning both. OK this description bit okay it needs to be at an as level um of detail yeah you can't just say it's the skin of the cell okay there needs to be a description there that is at um you know at an adequate level of detail for this for this qualification okay so you need to make sure you know it can be to remind you that's absolutely fine you know what you put in here is just a reminder just to just to um just to recall like i say uh, the, the 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 subject knowledge um but it the, the the detail on that description needs to be at an, at an adequate level okay so the function um this again it's uh, so the control control uh, entry and this pen is making me look silly here isn't it um uh, entry and exit sorry of substances okay so again that needs to be something to remind it needs to be a cue in order for you to have that um that higher level of detail um in the detailed description OK, and then which type of cell is it prokaryotic, eukaryotic, plant or animal, which, you know, which cells contain this and all of. Yeah, all. All types do that. So what you need to do is in order to do this sort of summary table, you need to have initially got that information in your head. So you need the the, the detailed diagram description function in your head. And then this is like the uh, the slimmed down version. OK, so hopefully reading these boxes will then um, uh, bring forth the uh, the information from your long term memory of of what you've learned. OK, so that that detail level of description I've been talking about. OK, so that sort of thing there where you uh, you need to go all the way down for all of these um, uh, all of these organelles. OK, right down. So that's going to be a nice big table. All right, and repetition is the mother of learning. The more times you go over it, the more you're going to remember. OK, and like I say, these these are like bread and butter marks. OK, these marks are, um, you know, fairly easy ones, structure and function ones. If you can do structure and function, you're about a third of the way there. OK, so that is something for you then to fill in and carry on on um, by yourselves independently. OK. Uh, right, the next bit is to do with um, tissue. OK, so there's different types of tissue here. And again, this is going to be a summary. You've more than likely had a huge big ream of notes from your biology teacher about detail on all of what all of these different types of, of tissue are. OK, so you would need a generalized description in here as a kind of summary of uh, the detailed level of, of knowledge that you've been given by your teacher. OK, so the different types. So here is a generalized description and then the function of each of these different types here. OK, so epithelial cells um, generally uh, outside layers uh, of things. They're going to be thin. They're going to be um, <clears throat> uh, linked with um, uh, entry and exit of different stuff. It's important here to remember, OK, do not confuse tissue types and epithelial um, layers with a, with the cell membrane okay so the cell membrane is around the cell okay and these layers of cells so um you know squamous cells but in particular okay very flat and thin they also form a membrane okay so if you were saying that um uh, gas diffused across the um 
the cell membrane of the alveolus, that would be incorrect. Yeah, you would say that it would it um, diffuses across the epithelial layer of tissue in the alveolus. OK, so don't confuse the two. But this again is another nice um, general uh, summary of all of the, the stuff that you've done on um, <clears throat> excuse me that you've done on uh, on tissue types okay so that's another thing that um you can uh, take a quick note of and you know you can fill in uh, independently later okay good job right so um due to uh, time constraints we're not going to go into too much detail on um uh on the microscopy bit okay there are other videos um available for that okay but again you need to know the method of how to work out um magnification um actual size uh, image size and all the rest of it okay you also need to know how to use scale bars all right and how to um accurately label um and work out sizes real sizes actual sizes okay Right, OK, one of the frustrating things about um, uh, cell questions is you get these pictures that you have never seen before. Um, they look really weird, like nothing you've ever seen. And students often go, oh, God, what, you know, what on earth is that? All right. But if you've done your um, description correctly in your structure and function bit, yeah, you, you'll be able to identify them. OK, so for example, this here is lots of membranes stacked on top of each other. OK, this here is an organelle that has its own uh, membrane. OK, and it has folds on the inside. All right. So again, these questions, these questions are directly out of the um, <clears throat> blended learning part of uh, the WJEC uh, um, resources website. OK, so these are good recall questions. All right. So when you've done your revision, when you've made your notes, when you've made your short form version of notes, either your flashcards or your tables um, like uh, like I've just shown you, that would then, you know, when you're happy with that, that is then a good time to practice past paper questions. OK, so about 50 percent of your revision needs to be um, content uh, learning notes and another 50 percent needs to be uh, practicing past paper questions in order to apply the information. OK, so I'd like you to have a quick go at uh, those two questions there. OK, just in your head or on a um, piece of note paper next to you. I'd like you to um, write down what the answers to those two questions are. OK, what is the function? What is the job of organelle X? OK, and the name of organelle Y. OK, we're going to move on to a uh, second part of the question here. So this photograph was taken using a transmission electron microscope. The structure of, of the organelles is visible in the photograph could not have been seen using an optical a light microscope. Explain why. OK, so again, this is uh, a question where you need to, <clears throat> excuse me, recall information about the features of an electron microscope and the features of um, an optical microscope. OK, so think about uh, the size of the organelles and the magnification of the um, the magnification that both of those microscopes uh, have. And then you need to draw that information together with this. OK, so remember, explain questions. OK, um, are always uh, why? Because. OK, so you need a because in here. All right, so there's, there's, there's two marks available. Why do, um, why would those organelles not be visible under a light microscope? Okay, so a couple of seconds there for you to write that down. And then we will um, do some answers. OK, so uh, the function of um, I think it was X, OK, is is respiration. All right. So that was um, that was a mitochondrion. 
OK, so the, the organelle that had its own membrane and it had folds on the inside. OK, so if your description of it was 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 detailed, you know, you'd be able to identify that that's that's a um, that's uh, a mitochondrion. OK, respiration. OK, that is adequate for the mark. OK, um, ATP production also um, adequate for the mark. All right. Um, if you want to get fancy and say aerobic respiration, that's OK, but don't fall into the trap of saying anaerobic respiration because that occurs in the cytoplasm. It doesn't occur in the mitochondria. OK, and energy production is not a thing. You do not produce energy. You do not create energy. OK, so it's energy release. OK, if you're going to say that. But if I was you, the process is respiration. It's one word to remember. Easy. Write it down. OK, uh, and then the name of uh, that um, stacked uh, feature of um, membranes altogether, that was the Golgi apparatus. All right, um, it says ignore smooth ER. OK, so it wasn't the smooth endoplasmic reticulum because the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is sometimes attached to other things. OK, and it's not as stacked. OK, so the Golgi apparatus really is these um, all these membranes stacked on on top of one another. Um, so, yeah, that's why. Um, all right. So uh, why would you not be able to see those um, organelles under a light microscope? OK, so here um, my guess is that nearly everybody is going to have got the first mark, but the second mark would be quite difficult. OK, so it has a low resolution. OK, so you would not be able to see organelles that were small because it has a low um, resolution. OK, right. Ignore reference to magnification or students sometimes want to talk about zoom here. Yeah, that, you know, you can't zoom in close enough. That is not what you mean. OK, what you mean is the resolution. You can't see a detailed enough picture. All right. So <clears throat> excuse me, uh, if you want to in your head say magnification, OK, so that the magnification isn't big enough, we can't see something that small. All right. You don't mean magnification, you mean resolution. All right. Uh, the second one here, so it or the optical microscope, OK, also be aware sometimes sometimes when students say it they're not um you know it can be difficult to infer what what they mean or what they're referring to okay so you need to be careful that when you say it you know you are talking about the optical microscope yeah the optical microscope has a low resolution or a lower resolution than the electron microscope OK, and also don't don't be afraid to write sentences like that. Yeah, sentences that this is this, that is that. Yeah, um, don't try and be clever. Um, you know, if it, don't try and try and be clever, obviously, but don't try and um, uh, shorthand your answers. Yeah, don't don't try and, and, and squish two points into into one sentence, if you like. OK. Um, and then the second mark there, because the wavelength of light is too short or not long enough, that is quite difficult. All right. So the reason the magnification, oh, I did it myself, fell into my own trap. The reason the resolution isn't high enough is because the wavelength of light isn't uh, is is too short. OK. Um, good. OK. Right. Um, next one. OK, so this is um, a more typical type of question that has lots of detail initially to start with. OK, so the first thing to do is make sure that you can uh, make sure you go through it and you understand it properly, whether that's reading it twice, whether it's reading it three times. OK, and um, a good thing to do is to highlight or underline keywords. OK, so uh, the diagram shows some organelles which may be distinguished from each other. OK, so we've got an organelle found in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. OK, so something found in both organelle found in only eukaryotic cells okay so instantly i'm thinking right what's prokaryotic what's eukaryotic that's fine all right so next one organelle found in plant cells contains inner membranes arranged in stacks so that's organelle b okay so plant cells 
uh, contains inner membranes arranged in stacks. OK, so instantly I'm thinking, well, what what's what's specifically just in plant cells? OK, then organelles found in animal cells uh, and in plant cells does not contain membranes arranged in stacks. OK, large organelles surrounded by an envelope and there are pores and usually one per cell. OK, small organelles surrounded by an outer membrane has an inner membrane to form cristae. OK, so instantly I'm thinking, right, well, I know what they are. OK. So again, if you're going through a question like this and you go, oh, I haven't got a clue, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You need to go back to your notes and do more of that learning. OK, you need to do more of that legwork and get that information straight in your head. OK, if you then get to the bit, oh, yeah, oh, and I know that, oh, but I don't know that. Oh, no, I know that, I don't know that. That is when you need to carry on plugging away at these questions. OK, right. So again, a nice little recall one name. What is organelle B? OK, so what is organelle B? So make a little note of that. OK, and then we'll move on. Uh, which of organelles A, B, C or D is a ribosome? And which contains most of the DNA found in a plant cell? OK, so I've 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 in my head. OK, I've made um decisions about what these are as I'm going down okay so which one's going to be a ribosome all right and then which one is contains most of the DNA found in a plant cell okay now that bit of the question is probably going to throw you okay but don't be thrown by it which part contains most DNA okay Good job. Right. So again, that's just letters. That's just recall work. Well done. OK, so uh, A is a chloroplast. Uh, part two, we uh, haven't answered. OK, that wasn't there. All right. But um, my guess is, OK, if we if we wrote the question for this answer that's here, it's what's the function of the chloroplast, isn't it? OK, to watch the function of the chloroplast. Good job. And again, uh, photosynthesis, you've named the process. All right. And then a ribosome is going to be A, both in uh, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Yeah. And C, OK, uh, the set, that's going to be nucleus. OK, so that's going to be nucleus. So these questions are good questions in order to recall the information that you've um, uh, that you've learned. OK. Right, uh, we've got one more. Um, I'm probably running out of time. I, I haven't checked, I'm afraid. Um, but we've got one more uh, question. Now, this is an actual um, question off an exam paper, OK? So it is slightly different. The questions we've done previously, they're from blended learning. They're more recall type questions in order to, um, to bed in subject knowledge. There are apply questions or application, sorry, questions here as well. OK, so image 1.1 so shows simple squamous epithelial tissues. That's quite hard to say from the alveolus of the lung. So I'm I'm in the alveoli of the lung. OK, explain how the shape of the cells is adapted to their function within the tissue. OK, so the cells are thin. OK, they are um, they're very thin. They have a large surface area. OK, so I'm thinking alveoli. What's the job in the alveoli? What does uh, what does it require? What does what does that job in the alveoli require of the alveolar cells? OK. Good job. If we made a note of that. We'll move on to the next bit. OK. Uh, this time we are in the urinary bladder lined with stratified epithelial tissue. OK, a variety, a variable number of cell layers. OK, shows when the tissue, when the bladder is relatively empty. OK, name the structure labelled X. OK, so again, some students, you know, th these. These are fairly obviously nuclei. OK, that's not, is it? OK. Um, State why the cells in the image 1.2 are referred to as tissue. So that again is quite a nice question. That's a, you know, Basically, you just need to have learned the definition of tissue. 
OK, because they're a group of cells that. OK. Good job. We'll move on to the next bit. Um, explain why some of the cells appear not to have a nucleus. OK, so this is to do with um, some technique and it's to do with um, the, the microscopy bit. OK, why do some cells appear not to have a nucleus when you've um, when you've made the sample? OK, so remember that sample is very thin. It's had to be cut in order to do that. We've referenced the image 1.1 and 1.2. Describe the main differences between the two types of epithelial tissue. Right. Describe. Um, they are nice questions because describe is literally say what you see. OK, so when you do that, image 1.1 has. Da -da, and image 1.2 has. Da -da. All right, so that's literally say what you see from the picture. Uh, when the bladder is full, the cells become wider and flatter. Suggests how this property of the epithelial tissue allows the bladder to perform its function. So this is now an application question. Okay, this isn't this isn't something that that's been um, this isn't something that you need to learn. It's not a definition or anything like that. Okay, but you need to um, know take what you know from epithelial tissue. What do they do? OK, what, what are some of the features of and then you need to apply that to the function that's just been described there? OK, so if I know this about epithelial tissue, therefore what about the bladder? OK, so you write an answer down uh, for that. Then we've got a nice um, calculate the maximum width of this cell. Give your answer to three significant figures. It's always quite sneaky that one. OK, so remember your I am um formula triangle okay so you have a uh <clears throat> oh i've i may have fallen into their trap so the cell uh, has a width uh, image of 50 microns okay cell a is shown at 42 percent of its maximum width calculate the maximum width of this cell okay so i would imagine like i have just done about to launch into my um uh my i am um formula triangle okay um it's not is it yeah so there's 42 percent and there's that okay so you need to use those in order to work out the answer what the maximum width would be all right and then with reference to the actual width of cell a cal calculate the magnification so this is where we're diving into our i am um for a uh, uh, formula triangle in order to work that out okay so i'll give you a little minute there just to uh, write down those answers and then we will look at our um uh, answers okay so uh the uh description so it's a flat thin large surface area one cell thick plus to reduce diffusion distance okay to make diffusion of gases more efficient so again there's a link here with 2.2 isn't there okay so there's a link with with the second unit the physiology unit there sometimes they do sneaky things like that you require both of those things in order to get your mark okay and remember wavy brackets means it has to be has to be that okay so b part one uh, wasn't a nucleus it was a basement membrane okay uh, so definition of a tissue, so a group of similar, same, specialised type of cells working together to perform a function, just a learning one. OK, um, why are there no nuclei? Uh, why are there some cells to appear not to have nuclei? Because the nuclei may have been a different part of the cell. So the section when the section is taken, not necessarily uh, taken with the part of the cell in it. OK. Um, part four, so simple epithelial tissue. One has a single layer of cells. Um, stratified epithelial tissue has more than one layer of cells. So again, even though this was a nice describey one, you need to specifically specifically specify. That's that's quite hard. Two, uh, which type of cell you were talking about? Okay, so this type of cell is this, and that type of cell. Sorry, this type of tissue is this, and this type of tissue is that. OK, so make sure that you are, um, are being 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 definite. Yeah, don't give these markers any wiggle room. All right. Um, the function there. So um, the bladder can stretch when it's full of urine. OK, so it can change size um, in volume when the bladder can fill uh, so it can fill with urine. OK, and then 
maximum width there is 119. OK, so if it's incorrect, you want to um, you can give one mark if you've given it to uh, any other number of significant figures. OK, so um, 50 divided by uh, 50 divided by 42. Yeah, you basically need to work out what is um, what's uh, if 42 percent is 50, what, what's what's 100 percent. OK, and then the magnification. OK, so you work out the scale bar. You need to measure the scale bar from the picture. Yeah, and then divide by the actual and the uh, actual magnification there is 10,500. OK, so um, practicing some nice uh, blended learning questions, some nice recall ones, very important. Also practicing some of these more uh, difficult, more of these application questions, again, very important. OK. Right. Uh, that I hope uh, was useful for you and I hope that has been um, uh, been a quick recap and a quick refresher of um, work through and that walking talking mark hopefully was uh, hopefully hopefully useful as well. Uh, OK, remember it's about working hard. You need to recall information and you need to apply it. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck in your exams. I'm now going to um, transfer over to Miss Abigail Kavanagh, who is from Uskol K. Connor, who is doing the second part of um, tonight's uh, video. OK, so lovely. Thank you very much. And I will uh, hand you over to Miss Kavanagh. Thank you very much. Hopefully um, you can all hear me OK and we will have a quick look at our AS revision area here to do with biodiversity and classification. So let me get that where we need to be. And we'll get cracking. OK, perfect. So thank you very much to Mr Davis. And this is an AS revision session on classification. I'm Mrs Kavanagh. And our reference here from our specification is about classification of organisms into groups based on evolutionary relationships, about the, the discrete and hierarchical groups that we can have, and also the tentative nature of classification. We'll touch on the three domain classification system and the five domain classification system, and then just have a very brief look at some of the features of the five kingdoms, so the prokaryote, protactista, plantae, fungi and animalia. Hopefully this is working, it seems to be going a bit slow. OK, so we'll have a go at defining our term for classification, have some familiarity with those five kingdoms, understand the difference between the five kingdoms and the three domains, comparing them both and then look at the characteristics of those organisms in the five kingdoms. So first of all, what is classification? Just, just have a think for a moment what classification is. Just jot your ideas down. So classification is described as naming and organising our organisms that we know every living thing is classified by scientists based on characteristics but also on their evolutionary history and we'll look at that shortly so you might be familiar with this kind of diagram and image showing us at the top just get my highlighter so showing us at the top here where we've got the kingdom it has got the largest number of organisms and then as we move down getting to genus and species we have our smallest number of organisms there and this is what we call a hierarchical system. So starting with kingdom with the largest number of organisms and then gradually getting smaller and smaller numbers until we get to our species. So these large groups then are split into groups of decreasing size as we go down to get to our species at the end. And these groups of organisms are what we call discrete. So if an organism is in one particular group, then it cannot be found in another group. So the elephant, which is a mammal, it can't be found in any other level or any other group. 
and you may see this referred to in questions as these groups are called taxon or taxa. This is another part of the specification that you need to be aware of and these are called phylogenetic trees and they are used to look at the evolutionary relationships between different organisms. So if we look here we've got our elephant at the top of this tree and here we've got our fish and over time organisms have diverged and changed and you can see here that we've got some of the ways that they have evolved and changed from their original down here from the fish so over time organisms will change so this is one way of looking at, at classification and how these organisms fit into different groups so we should have a, a, a general idea of what the five kingdoms are but we'll just have a look at them shortly but also the three domains that's what we need to compare so these are our five kingdoms so animalia plantae fungi prokaryote and protoctistans and then we'll look at the features of these a little bit later on and then we've got the three domain classification system so this is quite different the three domains are very very big groups bigger than the kingdom and this diagram shows us three the three domain system so we have let's get my highlighted it's disappeared one group which are bacteria the archaea and the eukaryota so you may see groups or names within these three domains that you recognize certainly here we have the animals and fungi plants we've got all of our bacteria here so some of these names might be quite familiar and then we've got our extremophiles here within the archaea group and what scientists did they they used to classify organisms based on their features and their morphological features and then as we've become more advanced we've looked at the DNA and we've looked at the RNA and we use that to classify organisms and we are able to classify them in a much more organised way and the difference is now compared to previously that's why it's it's a tentative nature of classification as our specification says because we've had to reclassify some organisms based on this genetic information that we've had that we didn't previously have. So what do organisms in the same domain, what do they have in common? There's a question for you, just have a, a pause and a think about that. So they have the same RNA, they share the same ribosomal RNA. So that's what scientists have used to classify different living things. And just an, another question really looking at our classification system that we looked at earlier which two taxa are used to make up the binomial name so just have a little think about that and jot down your ideas have a look and it's the genus and the species and then a third question here so we used evidence to develop the domain classification system but which one of these four terms here is not a domain so is it eukaryota archaea cnidaria or bacteria so again just have a little think what that might be and it's an cnidaria and then finally we're looking at the hierarchical system with our large attacks on at the top here which is our kingdom and then moving down into smaller sizes so these are all um, practice either practice questions or from um, blended learning which of the following is the correct order from the largest to the small so again a nice straightforward recall question so kingdom phylum class order family genus and species and then just a reminder we have three domains and then which taxon has the largest number of organisms that's the kingdom 
And then we've sent about classification being hierarchical. Is that larger groups being split into groups of increasing size or larger groups being split into groups of decreasing size? And then the word that describes organisms only belonging to one taxon, and that is discrete. OK, so we'll have a look at some exam questions very briefly, and this PowerPoint will be available. So if I don't get a chance to go through everything, then at least you can spend some time and go through some of the questions. OK, so this is asking which domain would the giant panda belong to? So thinking about the three domain classification system, quite a straightforward one, but also asking us to give a reason for our answer. So it might be one mark, obviously, to give the domain, but then our second mark then is our explanation. So describing that it belongs to eukaryota, but then saying about it's having membrane bound organelles, for example, or the DNA in an envelope. This is quite a straightforward question as well, looking at some details of human classification, again in a hierarchical order, and then we need to think about what class do humans belong to? So we've got kingdom here, we've got this spaces, so we don't know all these in between, but we know species is at the end. So we need to think about what class and what family humans belong to. So again, it's just a case of kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, to give us our answers, which is mammalia and homonidae. And then finally, another question of this kind. So we're looking at the Panthera unkia, which is the snow leopard. And again, we've got a part classification here, which we need to complete. So we've got kingdom phylum, we need to write down what comes here and here in our table and then what we need to finish off here as well. OK, so looking now at the characteristics of our five kingdoms, we'll just very briefly look at some of the characteristics of our organisms here. So starting with the animals. They're multicellular, eukaryotic, um, they don't have cell walls. They have a specialised organ system and nervous system and animals are divided into vertebrates and invertebrates. And here are some examples of vertebrates. You should be familiar with the five vertebrate groups of birds, fish, mammals, reptiles and amphibians and some of their characteristics as well. So here I won't go over this now because of time, but this PowerPoint will be available. So fish, amphibians, mammals, birds, reptiles. Oops. So examples of invertebrates. There you can see. And here's some of the invertebrate groups ranging from Cnidaria through to Nematoda with everything in between and some examples of different invertebrates there as well. And the plants. So again, some examples of different plants that you might find, and they have cell walls made of cellulose, multicellular, have specialised structures, and there are lots of different examples there. They are autotrophic, so they use photosynthesis to make their own food that they need. Fungi. So this is something, again, um, similar to what Mr Davis said about recall. You know, it's a good idea to make a table, perhaps, and look at the main characteristics of these different groups and apply that to some questions. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So here are some of the different types of fungi. Quite a, a broad group, so they can be multicellular or unicellular. Their cell walls are made of chitin. They reproduce by spores, some are unicellular, some are multicellular, and they can um, feed by this secreting enzymes and breaking things down. So they're quite different to, to other organisms so far. Protoctistins, 
Again, some examples there of different types. Um, quite a diverse group. They can be autotrophic, unicellular. They don't have specialised um, structures. They may form together um, to make a unit that, that um, functions, but it doesn't develop into tissues or, or into a higher organism. And then finally, our prokaryote and some examples there. So they're smaller than eukaryotes, they're unicellular, they don't have a membrane bound nucleus or organelles, and they have a, a loop of DNA. So again, quite different to our eukaryotes. So a question here, which kingdoms have eukaryotic cells? So just have a pause and a little think. And it's the animals, the plants, the fungi and the protoptistans. And then another question might be to describe the features of prokaryote. And that's something that you need to be really familiar with. So unicellular, lack of true nucleus and have a rigid cell wall, for example. Describing the features of fungi. So quite a few here in terms of the cell wall, eukaryotic, heterotrophic nutrition, reproduced by asexual reproduction through spores and also then produce hyphae and a mycelium to, to grow. Which kingdoms are most likely to engulf prey and carry out photosynthesis? And that's the protoctistans. So I'll just skip through this to get to an exam question here. So similar to what Mr Davis was saying about cell structure, it, it's important to go through each, each of our kingdoms and think about how we could classify what are the main features of all of the kingdoms and just get this um, embedded into our memory. Perhaps think about um, revision cards or different strategies that we have or mind maps to help us remember these facts. So here is an exam question that gives us some information. And we've got to decide which kingdom these organisms are. And just by looking at that, you might think oh, straight away. There's one. I know this because let's get my highlighter. I know photosynthesis. So straight away, we've got an idea already. We know here we've got nervous coordination. So we might be able to pick that one out and here reproducing by spores. So we may well be able to get quite a few of them without much thought here. So let's have a look. We've got the fungi, nervous coordination. That's our animal kingdom. So the next one, eukaryotic, single celled, no tissue differentiation. That's the protoctistans. And then we've got the prokaryotes and plants. And then here we've got a number of different statements looking at the features of organisms and we've got to match the letter with the statement. So I'll just go through this very briefly so that you can match this up and pause the film at your leisure. Again, just three features this time of the five kingdoms. We know the first one is not a plant because it's not made of cellulose. We know the second one's fungi. The third one is the plant because it's got the cellulose cell wall. So the, the style of questions are quite similar in terms of matching that, looking at the characteristics, which one matches which information. OK, so. For me, really, it's just a case of making sure that you you revise thoroughly, keeping all of this information. In whatever form suits you, practice lots of exam questions and you know, lots of luck, do your best. And thank you very much for your time tonight. And myself and Mr Davis will be back tomorrow for A2 revision. Otherwise, we will see you at the next session.